As a parent, it's just one of those really terrifying experiences. It's essentially something you have no control over. Your child has a congenital heart problem. It's just the end of the world for me. This is the hardest thing we've ever done. You get that news and you're looking down a dark alley and you know you gotta walk it. We're gonna come through this alley together with our child. You've gotta do everything selfishly to keep that faith. Don't let anybody, anybody take it from you. When you see your child for the first time after he's had his first surgery, it makes it a lot easier for you to move forward. And it makes you look forward to the day that he doesn't have to have any more surgeries. My name is Michelle and this is my five month old baby boy Landon and he has hypoplastic left heart syndrome and he just recently had two open heart surgeries at Children's Hospital. My name is Eunice. I am a physician that works in the emergency department. I am mother of Rowan. He is my little angel who was born about two months ago. We are Joseph and Emily Dreyer. We've been married a little more than eight years, and now four children later, we're very happy. Henry was born September 7th, 2013. And he was born this perfect child that had a broken heart. We found out at our 20-week ultrasound that he had an abnormality of his heart. Even though I'm a physician, I'm still a mom first. And even with my background, I'm still learning the red flags of what to expect for him when he's in trouble. We found out we were actually having twins two weeks into it, because we really wanted boys, and we got two. As a mom, you're going to go through the process of, did I do something wrong? Because you don't understand why it's you or your child, or why did this happen to us? It's just like a slow, sad, grieving process, and then you get to the point where you accept it and you just kind of move on from there. At about two weeks of life, we brought Rowan into the emergency room, and from there he got admitted. He got his first surgery. While we were sad, we were still yet glad that he was going to be able to live, and we were going to ever have him in our lives. With Henry's journey, there were great days and there were horrible days, and everybody has that roller coaster. We found a lot of comfort in the prayers and well wishes and good thoughts that people were sending to us. And our prayer then was to find peace that God's will was our will. You know, you enjoy the highs and you suffer the lows completely as a unit. It's okay to be scared. Just know that this is the start of the recovery process for you and your child. It's also okay to ask for help. It doesn't make you any less of like a super mom or dad. It's actually 
better for you in the long run and your child's health. As Henry's gotten stronger, and thank God these procedures have really been life-saving and life-sustaining, through everything he's been through, he just continues to amaze. I see him rolling now, and I see how much love and joy that he has in his face, and that makes me feel so good inside. And he can grow up and do everything, whatever he wants to do. Rowan has been doing very well. You know, he's walking, he's talking, saying a few words, just doing everything a little 17 month old toddler his age would do. Every little thing that he has done to this point has grown my hope. This is a process. You're going to really learn what unconditional love is and to accept things that you're not gonna be able to change. I couldn't change the heart defect that he had. I had to accept that. I know I was like super terrified at first, like with him by myself. Instincts take over. Your anxieties and all that slowly comes as days go by. Just enjoy the time. Embrace the moments, um, whether they're good or they're bad. He has progressed as a normal two-year-old would. He's running and, and jumping and swimming and, and sliding and doing all the normal things that a kid that's almost three years old does. Henry's a smart little boy. He's very persuasive. He knows what he wants. He's, He's charming. <laughs> I think we've seen a big difference with his ability to keep up. He is learning what, as a heart kid, his limitations are. But I think when you've had a kid that has come so far from where they were, you celebrate all of those fun, little, everyday nuances. To see your kid that's happy and playing with their siblings and to see your spouse smiling and to, to look around and to know there's nobody there that is worrying, that's a pretty big victory. Landon is now three years old, and he is currently in preschool. <laughs> He's outsmarting his brother every chance he gets. I think it's good that he had a twin sibling, just because he always had someone there for him. and then we did the third open heart surgery. So it's been a process. And there was actually one time we were sitting in my bedroom and he had asked me, why does he have to have this surgery? And I told him, I said, you know, how your fingers turn blue and you get really upset when Bubby can run faster than you and you can't keep up and this, that, and the other. I said, this surgery is gonna help that not to happen. So we would always just tell him, the doctor is gonna fix your special heart. Afterwards, the outcome and the reward is really great because now I have a three-year-old that's at 100% oxygen and keeping up with his brother and he's not turning blue. And it's like, so all the struggles you go through as a parent and he goes through, it's like at the end, the reward is better than looking at all the negative stuff. For everything I have to go through, I don't honestly think I would change it because it's made me a stronger person and a better person and it's made my son stronger 
and it's made him have a very positive outlook on life because he's like, I went through all these surgeries and I have this awesome scar. Or what he likes to tell the ladies is his heart was too big so they had to fix it and you know. <laughs> Megan Adams Roswick was born with half a heart. Without medical intervention, the condition is 100% fatal. Also ahead, a baby born with half a heart faces a 100% chance of death. Given no chance to live, but here is a phenomenal story. It's a matter of life or death for some. At least it was for Megan Roswick. He said that this is the single worst defect that a child can be born with. Did the Roswicks make the right decision? there would be three operations in two years. But would Megan's quality of life be good after all that surgery? Will she have anything like a normal life? Her body will tell her what she can do and can't do. That's what they've always told us, is that she'll, she'll determine that level. We look forward to seeing her get married and go to school and have her own family. I mean, she's, she very easily could not have been here. I remember the guy in the ambulance turning on the sirens, trying to you know, make me as calm as possible, and me laughing, having not really any idea what was really going on, but kind of looking up at my mom and knowing this wasn't a typical day. <laughs> That's probably my first memory um, as a child, is being strapped down in an ambulance with my mom. I remember being in kindergarten, being pretty excited to go do this nifty surgery thing, add an extra scar, why not? So when I was young, Went to my parents and said, I want to wrestle. My mom laughed and she knew that there's no way. And so I went to my doctor and I asked, hey, probably a dumb question, but I really want to wrestle. And he's, he said, that's probably safer than basketball. My mom wanted to hit my doctor. I was born in a very, very small town in upstate New York called Norwich, New York. The doctors thought everything was totally fine and they sent me home. And about seven days later, my mom looked at me and I wasn't really breathing right. They took me to a hospital about an hour away. And the next time they saw me, I was just covered in tubes and wires. And that's where they told my parents, there are a set of experimental surgeries or what I would suggest, the doctor said, is take her home and just let her die. Well. I guess she's not going to show you how she plays with her pacifier today. <laughs> oh well. Say bye, Megan. I had three of my five open heart surgeries before I was the age of three. My parents, I think, are the best people I could have asked for. They did a really good job not showing me as a kid how scary it was for them. It's something we deal with when it's time, not something we need to dwell on. I've gained a lot of personal strength with scary situations from my mother. She's the one that taught me that doctors are awesome and going into those offices is the last place you want to be scared. My condition, I, it's a it's not something I chose at all. So for me, and I think this really came from my mom, it's, it's the choice of how you react to it. And I chose to make it be a part of me and not all of me. I couldn't ask for better parents. My father has been there through the doctor visits. My mother has been very loving, always been by my side. They wanted me to live a normal life. I, I go out and play football with friends, they didn't say be careful. And if they said be careful, it wasn't for my heart condition, it was don't be an idiot. 
like split your knee open on a tree root. That's not saying that they're bad parents. I love them for that because I would be worried all the time because there's so many things that you can do. I want to go run. I want to lift weights. I want to play backyard football. I want to experience life. My mom was a dance teacher and an acro teacher at a dance studio. I was always in there, kind of goofing off and playing around, and asked my mom if I could do gymnastics. So she called my surgeon, and he said, we do the surgery so they can live as normal of a life as possible. And she's like, well, just to be clear, she's going to be ramming herself into a vault, falling off the bars, falling off the beam, falling onto her chest. Like, are you sure this is OK? And he said, yeah, absolutely. All right, Megan. She's going to set her own limitations. Little did they know, I didn't have any limitations. <laughs> By the time I was six, seven years old, I was training about 22 to 25 hours a week, testing my endurance, flexibility, strength, everything. And gymnastics just held such an important place in my heart because it was something that, for me personally, verified I was healthy. Once that was gone, what's next? I don't really know how to verify that everything's okay right now. There's a hallway of children's that they've redone it, but it still gives me the creeps. And it was just plain walls with lights on the side, and I was laying in, in the gurney, and they were taking me in. At the time, I was young. I was four, so I didn't ask questions. I just relied on the doctors and parents to know what was, was best for me. When I see it now, it, it's, it gives me the creeps, but it also, I think, man, I've come a crazy long way from when I was laying in that gurney to right now. My surgeon took some pictures of the cardio cast surgery and I thought this was the coolest thing in the world. This is my pulmonary artery that they needed to fix. And you can see the blood flow real shadowy right here and here. And it's really tight, almost like a funnel. And then, bam, it's just like an open tree. It's crazy uh, how much blood is able to get through this site with all this work. When I was 11, they did the Ross procedure. The day before, my dad and I, there was a little pond. We went fishing that particular day. I remember seeing him just kind of sitting there staring off. Never asked him about this, but I, I know he's sitting there thinking, holy crap, tomorrow's scary. I can't imagine what it's like to be a parent or a sibling or anybody in that waiting room but I know what it's like to be the person going under. It's not scary until you get in the room, until it becomes totally real. I love adrenaline. I'm an adrenaline junkie. Having my parents told she's never gonna have a good quality of life. For me, as long as you can feel adrenaline and feel alive, then you're having a pretty good quality of life. And I fell in love with winter skiing completely and Typical me, I went directly to the jumps and the rails, the scariest things you could probably do on skis. There's one thing I want to do, it's bring confidence into people. Nice job, young lady. Welcome back to Earth. Thank you. What did you think of that? That was awesome. You ready to go again? Yes. <laughs> I'm very fortunate that my parents 
allowed me to set my own limitations and I feel like overall it shaped me into the person that I am today. I graduated the University of Louisville in 2010. I met my wife in early 2012. Christy is awesome in every way, shape, and form. I didn't really even tell her much about my heart issues until we were pretty far into our relationship. My wife and I went through my last surgery together. <laughs> she was pretty awesome through that for a first time for a rookie. We can ultimately face the scariest of things and make it out together. I couldn't ask for a better person in my life for the forever. A year ago, I went out to lunch with my dad and I was eating potato chips. And I went to take a bite of the potato chips and they all dropped out of my hand and I bit my hand, but I could not feel it. I could not feel any of it. I just knew it was not chips. And all of a sudden everything started like swirling. I looked over at my dad to tell him something was wrong and it just was gibberish. The loss of speech only lasted about 15, 20 seconds. And I remember first thing I said is, Dad, I had a stroke. I remember going into CT and looking up and having the lights kind of swirl around me and thinking, I don't know if I can come back from this. I came home, ate, fell asleep, and I woke up with my whole left side not working. I didn't know what was going on. I was sleeping downstairs in, in my parents' house and I rolled off the couch and I couldn't move my left arm and I tried to brace my fall and I couldn't and I smacked my face against the coffee table and you know, luckily my father was home and it ended up being a stroke due to my heart condition. Just another setback. Uh, didn't realize how big of a setback it was. It was horrible. You get told a stroke is possible because your heart obviously isn't normal. I remember them coming back in and saying, yep, well you had a stroke. You actually had two of them on both sides of your head. It was crushing and it's something that took until very, very recently for me to come to terms with. I lost all my left, like all the feeling on my left side. Couldn't move it, couldn't do anything. And Good job, Emma. That's open. Nice shot. I never asked myself, why me? Because I've already done that with my heart condition through my life. I only wanted to get better and get back to where uh, I normally was before this. It was a process and I knew it could take over a year to start getting everything back. But a year is a long time when you lose yourself, what you feel like. I remember looking at myself in the mirror and I, wasn't this, I didn't feel like I was the same person that I was, and I wanted myself to come back so badly, so badly. I just wanted myself to where I felt like I could accomplish things again and push more boundaries. I wanted that so badly, and it wasn't coming back. I really <laughs> seriously was contemplating what, I, what my next step was going to be. In walks, in walks this person. <laughs> I remember looking at him, checking him out. It's like, it's pretty cute. <laughs> he was just so understanding of everything and, and really pulled my confidence back up a lot. 
fell in love with him <laughs> very, very quick. The recovery and rehab process was really difficult. But as I saw progress, I got happy. Where I'm here right now is all thanks to rehab. Now I want to be a personal trainer because of how rehab helped. I want to help other people. I've always just wanted to do things that people say I couldn't do. I let everybody say what they wanted to say and it, it fueled me. I have a picture of myself when I was like close to 200 pounds. I go to the bathroom and, and brush my teeth and I look at that picture and I was like, okay, I'm so well off of where I was. I want people to look at me and be proud of what I've accomplished. I know deep down it's really scary for me to have this particular condition. And I think for somebody so young, it's tough to have that thought and to have that real fear of just leaving her alone. I don't want to do that. She sees that I'm not scared of it as much and she's not petrified of it. I do know that every day I'm with her, it's, it's a great day. Right now, I am just about to go back to school for the first time since my strokes. I'm currently at the University of Cincinnati studying neuroscience and genetics. I'm also speaking at medical conferences on patient quality of care as well as transitional care between pediatrics and adults for cardiothoracics. A CHD is part of the person, it's not their identity. It's very easy to get trapped into it being your identity. And lastly, quality of life is not determined by physical ability, it's determined by how you choose to live your life. And I think that's something very, very important that I hope all of you can take away from this presentation. Thank you. That's been such an amazing experience because I'm able to meet families and physicians from all over the world and get to see all of the top-notch research that's going on and what's gonna be up and coming, which for me gives me so much hope. My older brother always looked out for me. He was more concerned about me than I am about me. Someone that I could tell anything that I couldn't tell my parents and he would shoot me straight. I have a wonderful niece and now two great twin nephews. I really want to see them grow up, be there for them more, share experiences with them, be the cool uncle. I have a completely different outlook, way more positive outlook on my life right now. And I really want to take care of myself because Honestly, I found someone who I want to be around for. I want kids so badly. Whatever the time may be, I will be ready and I'll be so excited to be able to have children. I know that I think about life far more differently than people my age. My wife says this all the time, she's really jealous of my memory, and I think my condition forces me to have a good memory on the things that matter because you don't get them back and you don't know how many you have. You gotta 
adjust and adapt to the adversity. I want to be known as someone that went out and pushed boundaries. I don't want to be perceived as anything but a normal, living, breathing human being. People that don't know me, I want them to be surprised that I have our condition.